Hey everyone and welcome back to another Shadowlands class preview. It is mage time, and you know what? There's a surprising amount of stuff here to cover, right? There's actually lots of interesting points to hit for each spec, so if you're not a mage, I think you'll actually enjoy this quite a bit. Now, when there's not revamps, we're going to be doing big videos like this that just do the whole class at once, and we are, you know, going into the talents, doing a big think there, so if you want more of that, then hey, like, sub, it actually does help us out, and with that, let's get started. The identity of the mage was one of the worst victims of the specialization of Legion, with them losing access to anything that did not fit their chosen affinity. Well, that's no more. It doesn't make for the biggest gameplay change ever, but that identity lockdown has been reverted somewhat. All mages have now got access to Arcane Explosion, Fire Blast, and Frostbolt. Now, these are not going to be super useful in many cases, right? Like, Fire and Arcane Mages, they can maybe use Frostbolt, right, in, in PvP. But yeah, it's just kind of there is something that you can do. Now, Fire and Frost Ward are also back, and they're also kind of niche, but that's the whole point of these changes, like, basically, right? Not everything has got to relate to gameplay, it's more about just giving you more tools. Then, Mirror Images is also baseline, and it certainly has been useful in Torghast, as you'll see in our footage, but, uh, yeah, it probably should not be on the GCD. Uh, when adding new cooldowns, I think Blizzard should really consider the ramp-up time of just players repeatedly pressing non damage buttons. I mean, one, maybe two should be the cap, but having to press mirror image, rune of power, and then your specs specific cooldown before pressing any other attack spells, that is just something that feels awkward and doesn't really feel like the setup is worth it in terms of feel when you're doing that. There are also some nasty interactions with the images that we'll get into when discussing Frost. Then Alter Time is also back, a huge talking point, but there has been some confusion. It's back, but in a less interesting form than and the mop one that you may have remembered. In mop, it basically would rewind your character's state entirely, including your buffs, your debuffs, and your mana. Then in Warlords of Draenor, it was reduced to just being location and health, and that did make it much more of a defensive and movement spell than something for maximizing your DPS. Now, don't get me wrong, as it stands now, it is a great tool and it really will shine in the hands of skilled players. I guess for that more interesting version that impacted the whole state of your character, I mean, yeah, I can only imagine how many things would break if players could cheese certain buffs and debuffs with the old school Alter Time. All the same, though, some of the excitement of having the old favorite back is a little bit hurt by this, but I do think that the current version, like, does work and is an interesting spell. Then another old favorite that's taking the place of Mirror Image in the talent trees is Focus Magic. Yeah, being able to give an ally 5% spell crit that may be contentious for some, but it seems like Blizzard are taking risks here, despite the clear negatives, and at least that is good to see. Uh, it's not all fun additions, though. They have got a pretty nasty quality of life nerf, but it's one that I think is, it's pretty clear why. Shimmer was almost universally taken by mages. It was a super clear choice. It took Blink off the global cooldown, made it usable while casting, and gave you an extra charge. Now, it did add uh, five seconds to the cooldown, but the double charges made up for that. If you could blink correctly as a mage, mobility came quite easily, and really with not that much penalty. Now though, one charge does feel a good bit worse, right? It is a direct mobility hit, but you could say that it is something that is justified, right? Now if you've got a heavy movement phase in a fight, or a player switching to you in PvP, well that means that Ice Flows is a much more valuable choice, um, you know, by comparison for Frost, or say Slipstream for Arcane, but I guess Fire does feel a little bit left out, although they do of course have Scorch, so maybe that's okay. So to clarify here, this change with Shimmer will not feel good, not at all, but it does seem like it might be a fair change. Anyway, that's the shared stuff out of the way, so let's dive into the specs. Arcane is an odd spec, it will continue to be that, but at least it does have some more tools now. It's had very few changes as well, which maybe indicates that Blizzard is happy enough with its core, uh, current core gameplay. Uh, Touch of the Magi is baseline as a castable spell, uh, so that's going to feel good, and the talent that replaces it, Enlightened, that is going to reward skillful mana management. It's a generic version of one of the Azerite traits, increasing damage above 70% mana and then increasing regen below 70%. 
Beyond that and the base mage changes, though, Arcane is fundamentally no different. There are a few nice things, though, like the mastery change extending the damage bonus to all spells. That's something, uh, something Blizzard mentioned in the class update that uh, will be good, right, for helping the spec out with any scaling issues in the future. And then I'm sure that veteran mages will be super happy to hear that mana gems are back. You know, just another little thing you can sort of use to optimize how you play. Now, the movement issues caused by Shimmer's changes may be offset by an additional clear casting stack for those who are running Slipstream anyway. Uh, more stacks does mean more flexibility, which is nice to have. There is, though, a pretty major downside. Arcane has got so much setup. Mirror Image, Rune of Power, Charged Up, Arcane Power, Touch of the Magi. That is a lot of spells to cast before you even do damage, right? I don't want to harp on and on about the GCD change, but I think it's obvious that it just keeps on coming up in different classes and specs. Uh, I think it's clear here. I think players in Alpha need to provide clear feedback on what spells do not feel good on the global cooldown. Blizzard did say that they will listen, so there's nothing to do for us but to just trust them on that. Uh, for Arcane, Charged Up and Mirror Image being off the GCD would make that stuff feel a good bit smoother, but as it stands, it does take three to five GCDs before casting a single damaging spell, and that just does not really feel that good. Next for Fire, they haven't gotten much in the way of major changes, but the devil is very much in the details with this one. So for some small rebalancing, Kindling and Pyroclasm got some buffs compared to Meteor. Meteor was just a bit too dominant and perhaps strengthening the highest uh, points of the spec. You know, the huge pyros and combustion should help out there. Now, in terms of the significant changes that you can really feel, Fire does not spread Ignite naturally anymore. It actually needs to do that with Fire Blast on a burning target. But the thing is, this is kind of counterintuitive because Fire Blasts will be kept rolling on cooldown during your ignite build up anyway it kind of feels like you'll automatically be spreading ignite because you'll be blasting your burning target right but if you use your last fire blast charge to build a bigger peak ignite uh, but then you can't actually spread that ignite with a fire blast well that just doesn't really feel like a fun decision to make although i do understand the intention here the fantasy of fire's ignite from before legion was to build a massive dot on your primary target and then to intentionally spread that like crazy I think a much better alternative, at least on paper, is to make spreading or building a bit more of a choice for them. Flamestrike is already underutilized in AoE because, you know, landing a pyro for a bigger ignite does more anyway. So what if Flamestrike maybe spread ignite, right? Then the whole goal in AoE would be to use as many hot streaks as possible on a priority target and then spend the last one on a Flamestrike to spread your ignite. That would allow for some hot streak gambling, you know, do I use one more pyro for a bigger ignite and risk not being being able to spread it, or do I spread the ignite now in case I don't get a crit? That's just an idea, of course, but I think it might feel better than how it currently would feel with the fire blast solution to spreading your ignites. Then another important thing about the fire mage, and one that's impossible to avoid, is that it's just going to feel a bit bad going into Shadowlands if you've played patch 8.3. The blaster master trait and rank 3 lucid dream, they resulted in these massive combustion single target bursts that would automatically spread to AoE, right? There was just huge moments of massive damage that felt explosive, and that sort of speed and power, that is not going back into the baseline. Now, that's going to be a problem for just about every class, but I think Fire Mage, because it was so impacted by those things, it's just going to feel the one of the worst affected in the transition. Okay, next up, Frost. There's not a massive amount to say here. The unintended no ice lance and orb builds are obviously gone because of no Azerite, and none of the traits were deemed interesting enough to carry through into this expansion, which, yeah, I suppose I do agree with. The only real major change is how Winter's Chill operates. It now has two stacks, and that is intended to fix double lancing at high haste. Basically, right, at the right distance and latency, players could fit two ice lances into a shatter combo, but that was not intended. What this change actually did, though, was kind of mess things up a bit. Other spells, including spells from your mirror images and your frozen orb ticks, right now they consume the stacks of Winter's Chill, which entirely ruins the point of the mechanic. Uh, Winter's Chill needs to only be consumed by direct damage spells like Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ebon Bolt, uh, and Glacial Spike, and I mean, yeah, not ticks of, or, you know, parts of multi-damage uh, spells, right? Now, I definitely would not expect that to go live. It seems counterintuitive, so I'm imagining that's just a problem with the owl 
alpha. But yeah, I mean, at first glance, I thought this was designed to remove the shatter combo uh, to a decent degree, but probably not here. Every tick of flurry refreshes the stack. So if you throw flurry after a frost bolt, ebon bolt, or glacial spike, it will shatter, consuming one of the stacks. But then the next flurry tick will refresh it to two. So that gameplay still is there. Now, this does have some other unintended uses, perhaps, like getting more than three chatters if a comet storm falls at the same time as flurry, but it is likely that those awkward interactions will be fixed by Blizz. That basically means we'll be left with the same Frost Mage core as in BFA. Not exceptional, not massively exciting if you want a new stuff there, but I think it does work, and yes, I'd say it's a solid enough base of a class to build, uh, just to build on with borrowed power, which, you know, like it or not, does seem to be Blizzard's MO for these things. So there you have it. Overall, I think Mage was in a pretty good spot in BFA. Frost didn't benefit much from the borrowed power like Fire did, and Arcane was... I mean, as always, it was Arcane. It's a bit weird. Uh, heading into Shadowlands, though, I mean, it does look like they've all had some minor touches to bolster them a little bit, uh, while, you know, the base Mage ed additions... You know, I think they're going to do a, a decent bit for flavor, right? I don't think it's going to be huge in terms of gameplay changes like, you know, frost bolting and arcane, but there might just, you know, a few more tools, right? Situational things. I think even if you don't use them every login, having them will certainly feel nice. And generally, I mean, if you're really satisfied, or sorry, dissatisfied with Mage in Legion or BFA, I would say don't expect to enjoy them here, right? But if you liked them in those expansions and you wanted minor tweaks, then you're in luck. That's what you've got. And really, I'd say that seems to be a through line with many of the classes so far. You're getting some tweaks, and then you'll be getting your soul binds and your covenant abilities, which are, of course, the borrowed power of the Shadowlands expansion. Oh, and of course, your legendaries. And being real with you there, the legendaries could seriously shake up your gameplay a lot. I mean, certainly for the mages, if you're thinking about having a few of those really beloved Legion legendary effects coming back, that's really going to impact your gameplay, so that could be quite major. Anyway, that is it with the majors. Let me know what you think down below. Sub for uh, more of these class videos. We've already done a whole bunch of them. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.